Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm here to do a book review for Notorious Sorcerer by Davinia Evans. I wanted to make sure that I was doing it this month and the month of September because it is officially released on the 13th of September. I won an ebook arc of this uh, as a Goodread, bleh, as part of a Goodreads giveaway, and I'm really sad that I only have an ebook version because this book has become one of my favorites this year. I am going to say that this is an adult fantasy book, and I'm just going to read you the blurb. I'm going to keep my review spoiler free because I want you to read it and decide for yourself. If you've never heard of this book, and I haven't heard many people talk about it, the premise goes, Since the city of Bazin was shaken half into the sea by a magical earthquake, the Inquisitors have policed alchemy with brutal efficiency. Nothing too powerful, too complicated, too much like real magic is allowed, and the careful science that's left is kept too expensive for any but the rich and the in indolent to tinker with. Sian Velo, a glorified errand boy scraping together less than money from a little interplan planner fetching carry doesn't qualify. But when Sian accidentally commits a public act of impossible magic, he's catapulted into the limelight. Except the limelight is a bad place to be when the planes themselves start lurching out of alignment, threatening to send the rest of the city into the sea. Now Sian, a dockside brat, who clawed his way up and proved himself on the rooftops with saber in hand, might be Basim's only hope, because if they don't fix the cascading failures of magic in their plane, the powers in their armies and the other three will do it for them. So I don't think that is any spoilers or gives anything away for what's happening, but it sets up the premise of the book very nicely. There are four magical realms that were kind of as a balance to one another, and the one that Vela lives in is called the mundane and he is able to use alchemy to travel to the other three actually he can only travel to the two of the other three and he gets alchemical ingredients that he then sells to more prominent alchemists and there is a group called the summer club where it is the rich alchemists and also the industrial alchemists, so those who, as part of their job, uses this with, for technology. There was a very famous alchemist called Negeti, who lived at the time of the Great Earthquake, and his works have disappeared. And so a lot of what is known about alchemy is based off what of, of what writings were done about his work. So second-hand information. I think this description also very squarely puts that Velo's motivation and drive for the book is he wants to learn. He wants to become a better alchemist. That is his goal. Everything else is big picture and he thinks it's bigger than him. And while this book is definitely Velo's, we do get other perspectives. We also get Zagiri, her sister Anaid, and a gentleman called, by the last name of his Sarani, I don't remember. Is Mer is Merley's? I don't remember the first name very well. It, it's definitely a lot easier for me to read than to try to pronounce some of these names. And I feel like the names have a very Asian or like Middle Eastern influence to them, and the society as well. Kind of makes me think of. It makes me think of. Turkey, just from some of the descriptions of architecture and then like food. But that's me. I haven't actually been to Turkey, so that's just me based off of what I've seen in like movies and TV shows. I think the characters are fantastic. Even the side characters that Velo and the rest interact with, and they, none of them are straightforward, only one thing. They have nuance to them and you get to see them be vulnerable to, I mean, it doesn't mean they're vulnerable emotionally all the time, but you get to see them 
have those moments of vulnerability because that is normal with how humans have emotions. By the end of it, you understand why each character does what they do. It makes sense. Now, as I mentioned, there are definitely different classes in this society, and that is how it, the world building has been set up. But these classes do interact easily with one another. It's obvious that the Azada, or the highest class, definitely gets away with a lot more. When there's a lot of restrictions set upon the city, the Azada can still travel pretty freely. But you also get to see each class has their place. And it's not impossible to change your class. I mean, it's difficult, but there are definitely rules and structures there. It was just very interesting how the classes blended. I know in a one of my wrap-up videos, I talked about the Brave, which are like part entertainment, part criminal organizations, but not to the point of where they're trying to like murder and kill people. They're there to fund their members. And there are members of the Zada class who, while they're young in their youth, are members of this Brave organizations. And each one kind of has a different focus on what they are interested in doing, and they have their own headquarters around the city, but mostly they're considered entertainment. So they'll put on fights with another Brave clan, or somebody can hire Brave bodyguards and then hire another clan to basically, like if you're hosting a party, you can hire the other another Brave tribe to raid the party. Again, nothing to actually hurt people, but more as entertainment. But at the same time, like I said, there is that slight criminal element to them where they're not necessarily against going in and nicking stuff for a job. Probably one of the biggest draws to a fantasy reader for this is going to be the magic system. That is a big part of this book. You are trying to figure out if the magic system is a hard magic system and has certain rules you have to follow, or if it's a soft magic system and you can kind of wave your hand and do things as you need. At the end, it seems like it is both. There are certain rules that you have to follow, but one of the biggest issues is the alchemists that are still alive, or the alchemists that are living at this time, don't actually know all of the rules. They think they do, and that's where they talk a lot about Negeti, the old alchemist, and the, you know, the rules that he set forth, but then again, they get all their information from that hearsay, from a secondary source, not from the primary source. And so there's still a lot of experimentation of what can I do to make something happen? And you get to see Velo and other alchemists trying, trying to fix the balance of the planes, trying to do magic in cases. Like, for example, the magical working that Velo does at the beginning of the book that gets him the limelight attention. And then what other alchemists are doing later on kind of in response to everything that's happening. So if you like the exploration of magic systems, that is what you are getting here in this book. So I guess to sum this up, this is a fantasy novel that heavily is focused on the magic, which is alchemy. It has strong characters that are navigating this world and figuring out what they want and what they want to do in it. And it has an interesting society that is on the brink of needing a change. I know this is a first in a series, and I am very much looking forward to the next one coming out. And I think all of you should pick up Notorious Sorcerer and read it, and decide for yourselves if you like it as well. Thank you, and have a great day.